Hello, and what is going on? Today I'm be showing you how you can make this passive mob grinder in your Minecraft survival and or creative world to collect their items and their drops. But before we get into this video, I want to show you what I was working on in my last video. I showed you guys how to make this... Uh, you know, this little dock house, the little tutorial here. Uh, and the reason why I showed you guys how to do this is because this is the current home I'm living out of. But I want to show you some more stuff that I've been working on in my survival world before we continue on with the tutorial on how I did this build. Now, one of the things I didn't get to show you guys last episode was we worked on this pathway here that connects the dock house to the rest of our builds. And if we go up and we follow this path, I kind of made it like a natural path throughout the land because I do like how... Uh, it turned out, and once you go to the top of this path all the way over here, we did a little mine shaft carved into the side of the wall there. It's unfinished, but it's what we're using to gather all of our materials for our projects, and it looks nice in the build, you know, having it, have it separate, but also sort of built into the side of the mountain there. So that's nice, and then after we connected th this path to the mine shaft, we can go all the way back here, and I'll show you another thing I was working on. For our source of food for right now, we've been using wheat. So I uh, I decided to kind of build the wheat farm into the terrain of the land. One of the first things we did was we went up here and we made a uh, little pond here. And then we had the water flow over the cliff into another pond here. And then we had it almost river out all the way down, connecting it to the ocean, trying to make it look as natural as possible. And I do like how that turned out. And then we connected the paths, added a little bridge, and then planted our wheat around it so it kind of looks more natural um, and it fits in with the build a little bit better. We added this little house here, and as you can see, it has a little like uh, you know windmill thing on the side to act like the water's powering the building. Um, but now we showed you all that. We're going to show you what I'm going to work on. This is the area we're going to build this in. Now we're going to try to do it. Uh, kind of built into the land like we did with the other builds. So all you're going to need to do is you're going to pick a corner and you're going to build three away from that, place an oak log, three away from that, place an oak log, three away from that, place an oak log again. And what we're doing with this one is we're going to branch it out one on the sides as well to kind of build it into that C shape of the side of the cliff face there. And you're going to make a three by three cube in each one of these. So again, you're going to build out three up three, out three, up three, and you're gonna do this for all of them wherever you want one. Keep in mind, this is more of aesthetics. This is not actually integral to the farm. You can definitely do it a lot simpler, which I'll show you, but this is just how we're building it into the cliff face. And then what we're gonna do is you wanna go out three, so that way the uh, all sides are connected. So that's out three and then one up. As you can see what we're doing here, we're just going to go around continuing that pattern, making sort of a C shape or U shape, depending on how you want to look at it, and uh, making each space in between a 3x3x3 three by three by three space uh, cube. And then uh, we'll build the farms in each of the little cubbies. So as you can see we're here, we're just going to keep doing this. One, two, three, and then we're going to place our corner post. One, two, three, one, two, three, and then we're going to place our corner post. And it's the same going all the way around. Uh, I think you can get the gist of it. Um, just making sure we're doing three by three space and carrying it all the way around. Um, yeah, so this is definitely, again, this is more aesthetics than it is um, structural to the farm. But as you can see here, this is what it, this is what it is going to look like if you're doing something like how I'm doing it. Um, Everything's cubed off, nice and open. Now, when you're ready to do the farm, you're going to dig down one and out one. You're going to take a chest and place the chest in the ground like so. You're going to grab a hopper and place the hopper facing into the chest. And you're going to do this for every single farm that you want. So this would be one farm, and then we're going to go over here. One, two, we're going to place a chest and then a hopper facing into the chest. That would be a second farm, so that's one and two. And then we're going to go over here. This would be a third one. So one down, one over. Place the chest and a hopper facing into the chest. This would be a third farm. Now you're going to grab your oak planks or any type of solid building block and build a two by wall on three of the four sides around the hopper like so. So one, two, three, four, five, six blocks in total. You have something that looks like this. Again, this is for each and every single farm. So each one of these is one farm. 
Now you're going to go to the left and or right of it, and you're going to get ready to place your staircases. Um, so all we're going to do here is we're going to grab a building block of our choice, place it on the left, place it on the right, and place a staircase. So that way you can still access the chest underneath the staircase and then place one block above. So it looks something like that. So again, one to the left, one to the right, upside down staircase, and then a solid block on top. I have something that looks like that. We'll do it one more time for you guys. One, two, upside down staircase with a solid block on top. Again, making sure you can still open and close the chest underneath. There should be a chamber on top of every hopper. So that way we can lure and push our animals into those chests like we did before. Should have something that looks like this. Again, you can do this for as many farms as you'd like. So now all you're going to do is the next step is you're going to get your wheat or if you're doing pigs, and grab your potatoes, um, but wheat you can use for cows and sheep. Potatoes or carrots work for the pigs. So now all we have to do here is we're gonna wander off a little bit and try and find ourselves a couple of sheep and then just lure the sheep back and then we can trap them and start using them to farm uh, resources off of them. So as you can see, we have two sheep, wild sheep right here. We have wheat in our hand. We're gonna walk over to the sheep and the sheep are gonna follow us. We're just gonna lure the sheep all the way back all the way back. Um, and then also, we, as you can see here, I grabbed two cows. You can also use leads. Leads are a lot easier than uh, using wheat because you don't have to um, constantly wait for them to catch up with you. You can just walk at a normal pace and they will follow. Um, so we already have our sheep over here. We're going to put our cows into one. Um, just be careful with the leads because leads do sometimes break. Um, so we have two cows. You are going to need at least two to start this uh, each and every farm. Only two. You only need two. But... Uh, you're going to hop up on the side, and now it's just a matter of trying to lure them and get them dropped down into the hole. So you're going to try and like maneuver your way around, maybe do a little jump in, try to push them in a little bit. It's definitely, definitely, this is probably the hardest part of the build that you're going to run into. Um, all right, so there's one, and then there's two, and then you can right click them to get your leads back, and then... You can go down and collect the leads that are in the chest. And that's a good way to also test to make sure that the, the hopper is working and facing the chest. But after that, grab a solid block, place it one above. Grab a fence, place it directly above, and then you can remove this solid block. So you should have a fence that's going to keep the cows from being able to jump out. Grab a water bucket and place it right above the block that the hopper is on. That way the cows will bob but not be able to jump out because the fence will keep them from hopping out. So as you can see here, we're going to take our sheep and we're going to do the exact same thing we did with our cows. We're going to pull the sheep. That's one sheep. Now we just need to get the other sheep in here. Again, this is probably the most annoying part of this whole build is just trying to get the the uh, animals in in the farm. I won't lie to you. It's pretty annoying. Uh, so let's get the sheep up, up, and if we can kind of pull them a little bit. All right, there you go. So now we have both the sheep in the farm. Again, you're just going to right click, get the leads off. And uh, we're going to repeat the process. Same process with the cows. Uh, I can't get this lead off. Hang on. All right. Once you get the lead off, you're going to again place a solid block and a fence block right above the sheep to keep them from jumping out. A water bucket, one above the hopper so that they bob up. And then all you have to do is right click with your wheat and they will breed and produce a baby sheep. And what this does is you'll continue to do that until it's completely full. And then it'll reach the max mob limit, and one will kill off, but it'll always kill off the oldest mob. And then once that happens, it'll automatically be collected in the hopper. So just using two without getting any more, you can continuously breed them until you have enough. As you can see here, we fit one, uh, two, our second one is a sheep. We have a third, a pig one here, a fourth, another sheep, and five. We fit five in this tiny little space. Um, we, you could even fit another two in the corners there. But we went with five so we can keep it, you know, somewhat looking uh, appealing. And now technically, that is the basic form of the farm. All I'm doing here right now is making it more aesthetic. You could stop right there and just continuously breed them. All I'm doing here is removing that middle block with glass so we can see into the farm. And, the, the you know, the side looks more unified. So I'm just kind of filling in the back gap here, getting rid of that, and then placing a glass block, as you can see. And we're going to do this for all the rest of them as well. Um, again, completely aesthetic. That has nothing to do with efficiency of the farm. And then once we're done, it, it definitely looks a lot nicer. And it looks more, you know, 
appealing. And then we're just doing, again, another building trick I've showed you guys before to match the other style of the houses that we've been doing in this current world. We're going to add some upside down staircases on the top and then some staircases on the bottom um, to kind of make it look more refined. So you can see here I'm putting some on the bottom. Add a little depth to your build. And one more other thing I forgot to show you guys is the roof. And again, using the trap doors to kind of make it look more circular in between, adding a lot more depth. I like the windows because you can see into the farm and it looks more finished on the outside. You can still access the chests. And if we go in here and around back, I have it set so we can still right click and breed all of our mobs to get the resources on the inside, whereas on the outside it looks a lot more clean and we don't have to worry about it. So the only thing you have to do with this farm is continuously right click and they will continue, uh, continue breeding and then after a certain number, it, every time you breed them you'll get profits. Um, you'll know this when you use about 20 to 30 wheat when you use it. Um, so yeah, so th definitely need a lot of wheat for this. All the resources we will be collected in the chests below. It's fairly simple. Again, this is more of me tying it into the build. As you can see here, I added another path, so it looks more natural. And this is the style we're going for in this current survival world. But again, you don't have to do what I did. I added a little pen here, so we can keep maybe some extra mobs there. But I'm pretty happy with how this turned out. I think it's, um, I think it's rather nice. So again, if you do like this design, let me know. I have an actual in-depth tutorial on how to make this as well on my channel, so I'll link that as well. And if you enjoyed, please let me know. Thank you so much.